Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your weekly reading for August 12th to the 18th. This is for Gemini, Gemini Rising, and Gemini Moon. And we're going to jump right into it, Gemini. You see that it is a loaded week, but this is definitely going to be a week that you will not forget. Mars and Jupiter conjuncting in your sign. That's right. That's going to happen Wednesday, August 14th. This is the best aspect of the week. You can see it's asterisk and green. There's another great aspect that I'll talk about later, but this has been building up. You've probably felt this energy as early as July 20th when Mars moved into your sign, joining Jupiter. This is Mars's power, is passion, it's action, Jupiter. Good luck, good fortune, expansion. So you can feel something building up. I'm sure you feel something building up. This is all you. This is you. Uh, and I think I mentioned in your last week's reading, this hasn't happened since 1989. It's been 35 years since Mars conjunct in Jupiter in your sign. I was a kid then. So I, I don't remember what was going on. But uh, if you remember, think about what happened around that time. OK, this is definitely you coming into your power. You're going to feel like a 12 out of a 10. This is big. This is really, really uh, big. A lot of, you know, this asset brings a lot of courage, a lot of drive. Success will be your motto. This is going to be a big theme for you. You're in it to win it. You're going to be walking the walk, talking the talk. This energy is really heightened. All right. This is going to be very, very strong energy. And it really is this beginning of, of it's this new cycle that's beginning for you. So I absolutely love this for you. Use it to your advantage. It can be really wild too. This is strong energy. I'm a Gemini rising. I got Jupiter and Gemini in my chart. Have y'all been getting some sleep? I've like my mind's been restless. So um, really, really harness this energy. It's got to be really, really great. Now, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Leo on that same day. Remember, Mercury, your ruling planet, by the way, is retrograde all month long. Uh, this is a time where you may be returning to former creative projects or creative pursuits that you've been working on. Remember, uh, retrogrades are, you know, of the past. There may be some things resurfacing around this time, including people, circumstances of the past that uh, may be on your mind. Now, Leo does rule your third house, so there could be messages you're receiving as well of the past. Uh, people from the past is coming out of nowhere. It could be uh, very interesting. I think I mentioned in my last live stream that's already started happening for me uh, with just a lot of people that, you know, even high school, someone that I, I, I hadn't spoken to since high school found me. And so very interesting, very interesting. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be a time where with the fact that Mercury's retrograde in Leo, exes could come up uh, former relationships as well, uh, even hobbies. You may be returning back to hobbies. Now, remember, Mercury retrograde with people coming back from your past, that is for the collective. You may be reaching out to people from your past as well. Uh, remember just to work with this energy too with Mercury being retrograde. It's just a time to reassess things, reevaluate things. You could be settling into things, just getting things done around this time as well. Now, Thursday... August 15th, we get to Mars squaring Saturn. So this is the first of some energies that are a little testing and where you feel that squeeze that I discussed in your monthly forecast. Mars and Saturn, the two malefic planets. Remember, Mars is in your sign. All right. And uh, Saturn is in Pisces in your 10th house of career. So you could start feeling a squeeze in in terms of career. 10th house is also fame. It's public recognition, honors, achievements, even leadership uh it, it, it's it's if you're not here for career by the way but a lot of y'all are looking at what's going on for y'all uh because saturn's been here for a while now uh it is what you're exerting your energy into that you want to be known for so just think about your passions but mars and saturn with this square, I mean, they're being naughty. All right. They're being naughty. Mars can be a little conflicty. Uh, Mars wants to accelerate Saturn limits, Saturn restricts. So this is just kind of interesting timing with the fact that you have Mars conjuncting Jupiter in your sign from on Wednesday. And then 
you've got all this momentum from it. And Saturn comes in and says, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to escort you. Okay. I'm going to escort you. And Saturn walks slow. <laughs> Saturn walks slow. He, uh, you know, he's going to be chaperoning you this time, uh, teaching you discipline. That's what Saturn does. Saturn is all about life lessons. So there's going to be a life lesson that you could feel around this time with this squeeze. You want to work with these energies and Saturn is all about discipline. So you, uh, know that remember, as I mentioned, your monthly forecast, this is Saturn. Saturn, that is also karma. So Saturn rewards you. So whatever test this is, whatever squeeze that you feel, it's for you to grow and to become stronger. All right. Saturn with this test, the more that you're in tune with your higher self, the easier it will be. And there may be, because we're talking about Saturn here, there could be some structures that uh, or even like systems that you've got set up regarding your 10th house, public image, career, whatnot, where you may have to work with these energies in terms of pivoting or adjusting to the squeeze of it or even the slowness of it, all right? Now, and I say that because we do have Jupiter squaring Saturn as well after uh, that's going to happen on Monday with the full moon in Aquarius. We'll talk about that next week. These aspects, by the way, you see I wrote Monday too because they kind of come as a package deal. They're all happening at the same time time so just remember to work with these energies saturn is chronos uh i've always said practice patience with these squares with these saturn squares uh at this time slow and steady will win the race okay you can still be in your power you can still feel charged up and things are going to happen for you as long as you take that action mars wants action uh and jupiter expands but just know that they may not go at that pace that you want to you know what's really interesting is that venus and virgo may actually be helpful at this time because venus and virgo is so practical it's good with problem solving uh but definitely definitely just practice that patience You've been in this situation before. We've had this aspect before. You're going to be fine. You've been in situations where maybe someone, you know, a friend, a lover, family member made you sit with them and watch Titanic for the 50th time. You you grinned. You smiled. You watched it. OK, and then it ended. That's what's going to happen. This is an aspect that's going to end. You know, with this type of aspect, there could be uh, some competitive energy as well. I would not be surprised with that, That uh, especially when it comes to career. Now, Sunday, August 18th, and again, Sunday and Monday, it's kind of this package deal. Mercury squares Uranus, Venus opposes Saturn, the Sun conjuncts Mercury, Venus squares Saturn. This is all happening at the same time. First, first aspect, Mercury squaring Uranus. We had this recently on July 21st uh, with the full moon in Capricorn that was conjuncting Pluto. So something around this time on this date with Mercury squaring Saturn on the 18th uh, could come float around again. Remember, Mercury is of the past. Now, with the fact that Mercury moved into Leo, there could be something around that even the new moon that happened August 4th where there's something coming up around that, where it may be something where you just have to adjust with or uh, something that, uh, again, settling something. That is your third house. It just may be some communication, something with siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors. Those are part of the third house or travel related, something travel related. Remember, Mercury is retrograde. So something of the past, someone from the past. Uranus is the unexpected. This is surprising news, surprising information, unexpected news. But the other thing is... Um, me cracking my voice other than me cracking my voice is that mercury squaring uranus there could be you saying something surprising to someone else as well or even thinking things i did say in my last live stream words are powerful so just be extra mindful and i'm only saying this for two reasons for you gemini one mercury is your ruling planet two you've got this saturn square right after mars conjuncts jupiter in your sign where you're just like beep beep road runner ready to go so you could be like oh 
Uh, and then three, all these other aspects that are happening. All right. You, everyone's going to feel this squeeze, by the way, everyone's going to feel this squeeze, but because it's, it's happening, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mercury being your ruling planet, it you may feel a little bit. The interesting thing is that Uranus is in Taurus, so that kind of softens it because it just could be something up here. There could be some insight that you receive as well. The twelfth house is the uh, its intuition. It is a subconscious as well. There could be something here deep in your mind, all right, that that resurfaces. And when it does, just unroot it if it's not serving you well. Even in fact, with these aspects, really good time to, you know, weed things out of your life that you don't find meaningful for you. But just be the best reflection of yourself. Don't let anyone get your goat around this time. Uranus is all about breakthroughs. So have this moment to have your breakthrough. Now you see that uh, the sun will conjunct Mercury. Uh, this is really nice. Sun conjuncting Mercury. We have a Mercury Kazemi. It's when Mercury is in the heart of the sun. That alignment is really strong. This is a total refresh, especially of the mind. Mercury being your ruling planet. You get this. Mercury Kazemi in Leo in your third house, which you are the native ruler of. You really get this. So this is when you have this big aha moment where things make sense. You make things make sense. This is uh, that this is the aha aspect of the week. So this is having that awareness, maybe even this awakening, maybe coming into your confidence, knowing something that that really uh, is something that you feel was necessary for you to know. Because remember, Sun and Leo, uh, confidence and in, in, in leadership, and it could even be like this dramatic awakening as well. Sun and Leo is dramatic. Now Venus opposing Saturn. This is when you could start feeling a little bit of a squeeze when it comes to commitments. So Saturn remembers Kronos long-term, long-term goals as well. So uh, with Kronos' time. So there could be something here in, in terms of commitments, maybe even long-term commitments, where you may feel that little squeeze in love and money and creativity, all those things that Venus does rule. Venus being in Virgo, there could be elements of your domestic sector, family relationships with family members as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised you've got that, you know, Mercury, Kazemi, and Leo. That does rule siblings, like I said earlier, and even, you know, relatives as well. But just keep that in mind. There could be something here where there is some sort of delay, or you may even realize that you might have to work a little harder for something that you want in terms of something that has to do with commitments, especially if you are here for career. This is Saturn having a lot of these oppositions and squares in your 10th house of career. So just remember to play by Saturn's rules. You will be rewarded. You will definitely be rewarded. And it is also a good time not to overanalyze things with Venus and Virgo. Uh, Venus and Virgo, there are benefits, but also it is in its fall. And Venus and Virgo can make you a little bit, uh, it brings out that, uh, like that self being self critical. And so just again, work with these energies, reassess things that you have to reassess. Try not to uh, over analyze anything, just be in touch with your higher self. You're going to be absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, think about the things that you do want these long-term commitments when you actually get to it. When Saturn says you pass the test, think about how good that will feel. All right. Now you see Venus squaring Jupiter in your sign. So these are, uh, Venus squaring Jupiter, the two benefic planets in a square. It is honestly just a time not to be over indulgent or excessive or extravagant or even overspending. Um, but there could be something here where you may be having a lot of conversations, communication, and even interactions with family, parents, children, your significant other, neighbors, all of that. Remember, this is your domestic sector that Venus is in. Jupiter is in your sign. Uh, so it's okay to be social. Venus is very social, but it is also a time where you want to read the room as well. And I only say that because of all these other aspects that feel like a squeeze. So with that said, 
Gemini, let's get to it. This is a big week for you. Mars conjuncting Jupiter in your sign. You waited 35 years for this. You waited 35 years for this. Gemini, I love this. Let's let's get started. Gemini, Gemini rising, Gemini moon. All right, let's see what's going on for you for August 12th to the 18th. Gemini, now, uh, like I did not say earlier, I do a traditional cultic cross spread. It offers the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers. You know that we will, secondly, Gemini. Uh, how are y'all doing? Talk to me. Y'all look great. You look really good. I, f I, I feel your energy. Do y'all feel really amped up? It's, I mean, Mars conjunct in Jupiter is really strong. But you had Jupiter. You got Mars in your sign for... Uh, a few weeks now. Anyway, let's get started. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Holy. Oh wow. You are getting a mic drop. You're going to get two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three. Oh my goodness. When I say you waited 35, whoa, this is big. Let's get started. You know you're good. I don't even have to spell that. You, I, you're really good here. You got the Wheel of Fortune. Yes, your life is changing. There's new paths open up for you. They probably already did. Some of y'all are taking that action to open those paths for you as well. Uh, and I want you to take that action. Uh, th listen, here's the thing. With Mars in your sign, remember what I said, Mars wants you to take action, but a lot of y'all are going to feel things are just opening up for you anyway. I mean, you just got the Wheel of Fortune. This card is highly associated with not only fate, but also karma, all right? So that's really nice. It seems like you are really working with your karma. Uh, this is really, this is great. Uh, you see that the Wheel of Fortune is card 10, one zero equals one, new beginning. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, this card is attributed to Jupiter. Jupiter is in your sign, Gemini. Jupiter, good luck, good fortune. I mean, you just got the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, this is something where, uh, yes, wheels, this wheel is turning for you in your favor, opening these new paths, opening these new paths that you're going to love. You're, I mean, I can't even, oh my goodness. I mean, you just got the nine of cups in the heart of your spread. This is a card of satisfaction, like deep satisfaction. This look, so something is happening that's going to bring you all this joy and make you satisfied and make, you know, make your heart sing. You see the cups arranged over his head. That's a lot of enlightenment. Cups are emotions, feelings, love, wonderment, intuition. But look at the cups. It's And look at the way that he's sitting. So two things here. One, it looks uh, almost as if he's showing off the cups like they're trophies. This is being proud of yourself for your accomplishments. Secondly, this is so crazy. This is the Witch Come True card. So this is why he's satisfied. There's something that you've been hoping for that's happening now. Coming after the Wheel of Fortune? I, I don't even know what this. I mean, this is huge. And with all this Pisces energy, by the way, looking at what's going on for you. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. Sorry. All right. Um. I, I got to do that to entertain you while I'm drinking because that silence. Oh. This is saying that there could be something here with career. Now, I say that because you've worked really hard with Saturn and Pisces in your 10th house of career and fame, honors, achievements. Again, what you want to be recognized for that you're putting all your energy into blood, sweat and tears. There's something happening here because remember I said Jupiter attributed to wheel of fortune now you got jupiter and pisces the nine of cups pisces or 10th house of career and jupiter is the ruler of pisces i like i can't even i can't even um this is really big now you also got the five of cups uh in your challenge area so the biggest energy that's coming through is that yes this is a card of you know, uh, something that uh, this person, you see the figure looking back at the spilled cup. So there could be a circumstance or a situation that happened that he can't let go, even though there's two full cups behind him. All he's got to do is pick up those cups, cross the bridge, the bridge, 
bridge between the past and, and the future. Go home, uh, turn on The Simpsons, whatever you want, whatever brings you happiness, joy, uh, get together with your family, whatever it is. You even see water going under the bridge, right? So there is a sense when you look at your entire spread here, it seems like you're getting over something that could have already happened, could have already happened that you found disappointing this week. You found you've healed emotionally. That's what this card is. It is emotional healing. And so there is a sense of you letting that go. Uh, really, really, really nice. And if you feel that you are in a place this week where it's hard to let something go from something that has happened in the past, that was likely, you know, low energy frequency, maybe something that you found frustrating or disappointing, but also something you just really want to hold on to, like you're, you're still in disbelief, like, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. And, you know, like, why did they, you know, end Game of Thrones that way or whatever it is, right? That there, there's, you've got, a, it's, now you got to move on. You got to move forward. Okay. Don't let your past dictate your present. Don't let your past dictate your future. Let's move forward. But again, the biggest energy here is it seems like you are, it seems like you are, and it's a process. Now you've got the page of pentacles in your crown. So yes, you are seeking something new. There is something that you're really vibrating with. That is you're manifesting it into existence is, is what's happening this week. Uh, pages are earthbound and so are pentacles. So this is something that is uh, very grounding, something rooting up. You definitely want something to root up in your life, something that you're very compelled with. And it could be in a financial sense, especially because it is pentacles. Remember, pentacles are your physical reality too. But the great thing about this page is that he's kind of like the, um, uh, I don't like the Doogie Hauser. He, like he's obsessed with learning. He wants to learn how to monetize this, to grow his physical reality, uh, become the king of pentacles one day. And he will. He That's how committed he is. All right. So this is really great. Just continue to move that direction. You have the two of swords in the root of your spread. Now, here's the thing. There could be a part of you where you may have to really connect with, uh, you know, uh, that heart chakra. Okay. Really connect with your heart chakra this is a lot of the mind remember you've got a lot of activity happening in your sign mars and jupiter there venus and virgo as well you've got mercury retrograde and leo in your third house remember that's up here as well uh so remember what i said don't overthink things but the biggest thing of all do not resist is the biggest energy here all right don't resist not seeing the things that you need to see okay uh, go at your comfort level, taking off this blindfold, right? So there could be some decision that you may have to make. There could be something where you may feel even a little defensive about, but remember it may be you, uh, overthinking things right there. It, it, you see that her back is turned to both the moon and the sea. So into your intuition and your emotions. So really again uh go within trust your intuition that's going to make the biggest difference but be in touch with your emotions too uh and that's gonna that's gonna make everything work out for you uh it seems like some of y'all may want to maybe uh sitting on a decision as well this week okay just remember communicate you want to be able to communicate um and it could have to do with something that is a relationship partnership as well if you are here for love uh that could be something here i mean look you got the ace of cups in your future so if it is something about a relationship that didn't work out or something that didn't go the way that you wanted and you can't uh, you know you're still dwelling on it look at what you've got waiting for you as soon as you move forward you've got the ace of cups in your future now the reason why i say relationships is because this card is attributed to moon and libra libra not only is a native ruler of partnerships and relationships libra rules your fifth house of love and relationships i'm gonna remember your south node is in libra so some things have to go some things have to go now all right uh and it doesn't mean that uh it could even just be a part of a relationship the way that you see something about a relationship as well or maybe even a phase in a relationship you're like okay let's end this phase let's move forward in this new phase now ace of cups there you go boom this is absolutely amazing you just got the holy grail uh aces new beginnings, new opportunities, new cycles. This is fantastic. Uh, cups, 
remember love, emotions, feelings, intuition even, but look at that overflowing, this abundance of all this love energy of, of, of your emotions. And I always say, uh, when this card comes up, think about the last time something brought you so much joy, it brought you to tears. That's what this card is. And it could be meeting your soulmate. It could be, you know, getting your dream job. It could be, you know, getting a promotion. It could be having a baby. There could be any, just something big, big. This card is rapturous. It's that intense pleasure and joy. It's nirvonic. It's nirvonic. It's euphoric. It's, it's everything. It's everything. We call this the heart of tarot. So you've got something new coming through with the nine of cups, something that you wanted. All right. I mean, your life is changing. This is huge. Gemini, let's get to your stuff. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a big week for you. It is going to be a big week for you. And, you know, even with the Mars Saturn square uh, and then Jupiter Saturn square, yes, that is going to affect you. It's going to be a squeeze, but it seems like, you know, for y'all, because you've had the, a lot of these aspects, even strong aspects in your 10th house for even for like a year. I mean, so it's just like, it's like water off a duck's back for you at this point. Anyway, let's get to your stuff. Y'all are, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so here we are, Gemini. Y'all, uh, by the way, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Completely forgot my lines because I'm so excited with what's happening here. You're good. You're absolutely good. This could be your best weekly. This could be like the best weekly reading for a week where it's a big squeeze. Wow. Let's get started. You got the four cups. Okay. So some of y'all may be uh, this week thinking about, well, the first thing that's coming to mind is uh, remember the, what I talked about the uh, Venus squaring Jupiter, not being uh, it's like overspending, overindulgent, extravagant, that kind of energy comes with Venus squaring Jupiter. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm bringing that up is because you may already have a lot of things. If you feel that you have a lot of things in your life, things that are bringing you this emotional fulfillment, you may not necessarily be open to new things coming in. Be open to them. Okay. Be open to them because you got the Ace of Cups in your future. You have the Nine of Cups in the heart of your spread. You've got the Wheel of Fortune here. But the other thing is just raise your gratitude too as well, especially with Venus Grand Jupiter. Uh, it's it's also, um, you know, cups. So emotions are at play here. There could be something coming through that I want you to get really excited about. And you, I always say this, you create your reality and you are made of energy. You already vibrate at a certain frequency. The higher the frequency, you're going to match the things that you want. And so I always say this is a card that tests you. And this is a card of gratitude. It's testing your gratitude. So just continue to vibrate at a higher frequency because you see he's standing here with his arms crossed or sitting here with his arms crossed. He's uh, closing off his heart. You see that she's doing the same thing. Now, when you get these two people doing the same thing, Remember what I talk about, you know, uh, with the nine of cups, because now you've got to see him. It's crossing his crossing off his heart, too. So this is just saying with the four cups showing up, don't take things for granted. All these beautiful things are happening because you made them happen. All right. And there are wonderful things happening where even the universe. Remember this hard card highly associated with karma. You you earned this, you earned this. So really immerse in, you know, uh, the, uh, all the energies that are working in your favor right now. And just, again, that gratitude is going to make a big difference. Now you have the queen of wands who has the power to attract whatever she wants. She is highly, uh, entrepreneurial. She is a businesswoman, but She's also full of passion. She's full of passion. She's very charming. This is the queen where, you know, people gravitate toward her. People love this queen. This is really amazing because Queen of Wands is Aries. Aries, your North Node, is in uh, rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So there's 
there's things happening for you this week. There are things happening for you this week. You even see the sunflowers in her hand. Uh, sunflowers, by the way, naturally gravitate toward the sun, right? The face of the sunflowers. Uh, but they exist in the actual sun card, which is optimism. It's abundance. It's 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 every it's a sun. It's the sun. It's vitality. It's everything. It's everything that spotlight. Uh, so this is really great. Coming with the Ace of Cups. It seems like someone's opening doors for you. It seems like there's someone that. That's, that's uh, definitely going to make a big impact on your life in this wonderful way. Someone with a lot of power. Now you also have the five of swords as well. But where it falls in your staff, it is just saying that you're at this point where this week you're like, okay, I'm not going to get in my head. I'm not going to get in my head. I know not to get in my head. I'm going to move with these energies this week. I'm going to work, you know, with this karmic energy as well. Five of Swords is also saying that there could be, uh, if you find that you are not seeing eye to eye with someone, this is the week where you're hoping that you're clearing things up. Y'all are patching things up as well. All right. So, uh, and there's definitely going to be a part of you where uh well some a, a lot of y'all may feel this in a spiritual way as well okay uh it just kind of like n having that balance mind body spirit not everything up here all right having that great balance of all of everything all right now uh lastly you've got the star and your final outcome oh my goodness Jeff, I like i don't even know what to say at this point you're good you're absolutely good the star of this card is attributed to Aquarius, first of all. So uh, that's going to be a big deal when we get to Monday next week with the full moon in Aquarius. But again, you're going to be feeling the energies of the full moon. It's a strong full moon a few days before, but there's culmination with full moons. All right. So it seems like there's something ending. There may be even just a phase of something. There could be just a turning point, but something new there's something new happening and these are the stars aligning for you this is success is what i mentioned earlier right with mars and jupiter in your sign well they're all eight pointed the stars there are eight of them this is card 17 one seven equals eight 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 is uh in numerology uh, uh success it's it's prosperity all right this is this is really wonderful. The star is also faith. It's having faith in yourself, having faith in the universe. There's a lot of healing in this card. This is really magical. I I have to say it. This is your best weekly reading in a it, for I mean I just can't get this is there's a lot happening here that's all in your favor. Just have faith that everything's working out in your favor. There's a lot of great karmic energy here. Wishes coming true, something new that's going to bring you this in 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 your future, this great joy, especially if you are here for partnerships and relationships, and that can be love, relate, uh, romance. It can be career as well, but everything is happening for you now. This is just so. This is nice. This is wonderful. And there is a sense. Remember, I said Jupiter is being in your sign with Mars in your sign as well. There's that sense of growth. Well, you even see the water bear here uh, with all this freeness, feeling free. You see the water bears naked, feeling that freedom, that freeness, that innocence, but pouring onto the land as well. So there's that sense of things growing in your world. Uh, anyway, this is just bonkers yeah i mean this is amazing gemini i'm very excited for you if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments let me know what is going on i'm very i want to know now i'm very curious uh well i should be i'm gemini rising uh next week we will talk about the full moon in aquarius we're gonna talk about jupiter spring saturn as well uh y'all uh a lot happened next week we move into virgo season uh so then we have a bigger shift into your domestic sector but anyway we'll talk about that next week i'm excited for y'all gemini's thanks so much i'll see you next week bye bye